Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Kintora Pharmaceutical Limited and their drug KX826 pyrolutamide. Just as a quick recap, KX826 pyrolutamide is a non-steroidal anti-androgen that is currently in clinical trials in China and the United States for the treatment of acne vulgaris and male pattern baldness, also known as androgenetic alopecia. Essentially, it is theorized to work by blocking dihydrotestosterone from attaching to hair follicles in the scalp by blocking the androgen receptor in the dermal papilla cells of the hair follicle. This is important because when dihydrotestosterone attaches to these androgen receptors in hair follicles that have the genetics for androgenetic alopecia, it causes the hair follicle to shrink in size and produce thinner hair over time until the hair follicle can no longer produce any hair. Now, Pyrolutamide has been having a lot of issues since it failed to show statistical significance at the conclusion of its Phase 3 Chinese clinical trial back in December 2023. In that failed Phase 3 clinical trial, pyrolutamide was tested at a 0.5% concentration against placebo in a double-blind multicenter placebo-controlled study. This is a very high-quality study design. So if it failed here, that isn't good news. It could be the case that perhaps at 0.5%, pyrolutamide is not effective, and higher concentrations of the solution would be needed to show a statistical significance between the treatment group, which would be pyrolutamide versus the placebo control. Since then, we've seen a variety of new clinical trials. These new clinical trials that are ongoing include a clinical trial for continued safety monitoring of pyrolutamide, another trial where pyrolutamide goes head to head with minoxidil and a new trial that tests pyrolutamide at a higher concentration of 1%, which I am personally excited about as I mentioned that as a possible solution in my video where I talked about pyrolutamide first failing the phase 3 clinical trial process. On June 4th, 2024, Kintor Pharmaceutical Limited announced on their Chinese website that their in-house developed compound pyrolutamide has received the International Nomenclature Cosmetic Ingredient designation. This development indicates that Kintor is exploring a cosmeceutical pathway for pyrolutamide, marking a strategic shift from the traditional pharmaceutical route. The International Nomenclature Cosmetic Ingredient System is a globally recognized standard for naming cosmetic ingredients, managed by the Personal Care Products Council in the United States. The International Nomenclature Cosmetic Ingredient System provides consistent and standardized identifiers for cosmetic ingredients, which are used for product labeling and regulatory compliance across various countries. This recognition by the International Cosmetic Ingredient Nomenclature Committee is a significant step for Kintour as it facilitates the global launch of their functional cosmetics, incorporating pyrolutamide as the main ingredient. The cosmeceutical route is generally less stringent compared to the pharmaceutical pathway. Cosmetic products need to demonstrate dermatological safety, but do not require the extensive clinical trials needed to prove therapeutic efficacy. This can expedite market entry and reduce development cost. But pursuing that cosmeceutical approach allows Kintor to diversify its strategy. So while pyrolutamide is still undergoing trials as a pharmaceutical, exploring its potential as a cosmetic ingredient opens additional revenue streams and market opportunities. L'Oreal more or less did something similar with stemoxidine. However, I would say that Kintor's research on pyrolutamide and its clinical trials are far more fair and robust. So when it comes to something like safety, which is actually more important than efficacy, when it comes to the cosmeceutical approach, Kintor already has mountains of clinical data proving that pyrolutamide is safe. But this is admittedly very disheartening. I'm sure many of you remember the South Korean company, Bioneer. <laughs> Okay, and for those of you who don't remember CosmRNA, it's a product made by this South Korean company, Bioneer. I'm actually going to include a clip from a previous video that I did about a year ago on the subreddit where people were complaining about the product not working, and it was a clear scam. So just sit back and listen to it, and uh, yeah, just I want to remind you guys just how awful CosmRNA was. And hopefully Kintor Pharmaceutical Limited doesn't go that way with pyrolutamide.
It is sad that members are finally starting to wake up to the great hair loss scam of 2023. Review my posts in May. I made clear multiple times that this company, Bioneer, and Cosme RNA are obvious frauds. I was ridiculed, cursed out and downvoted by other members. Then came the Photoshop fraud, the emails from the company saying that no shedding will occur with its product, when the majority of members in the forum, including me, experienced it, not honoring the refund policy, leading to PayPal disputes, flooding this forum with fake shareholder comments, fake Amazon reviews, and alleged before and after images from studies that look identical meaning no improvement. If forum members again go bonkers over this reality check, so be it. Otherwise, I will continue to monitor the daily posts of disappointed users and see whether the group finally accepts by October that this product is snake oil and the company should be charged with deceptive trade practices. Hopefully, my posts saved a few desperate souls from wasting their money on this product and time with much more reliable solutions. The South Korean company, Bioneer, and how its SAMI RNA topical androgen receptor blocker, Cosme RNA, failed horribly with multiple instances in which the company attempted to Photoshop before and after pictures along with omitting crucial information to customers and also having a questionable safety profile. Hell, they even allegedly tried flooding Reddit with bot accounts with awful before and after photos. Well, one year later and no one is giving them good praise. I'm not saying that Kintor is going to end up this way. If anything, I actually think it's encouraging that Kintor is exploring its options and still continuing clinical trials to see if they may find a statistical significance between those treated with higher concentrations of perilutamide against the placebo control. So I would say to expect to see perilutamide on the market soon and not on gray market websites. But be cautious and temper your expectations on whatever concentration, likely at 0.5%, they may release it at because it may or may not be effective. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm really loving the support I've been getting lately, and I hope to see you on the next one. And hopefully we can get pyrolutamide to work to some extent. Hopefully the 1% concentration for this new clinical trial that's coming up actually works, right? That we actually see statistical significance. But I don't think we are. I was at least hoping that they did a 2% versus a 5% concentration of pyrolutamide. But, I mean... Let's just see if 1% is enough. But I am hopeful for GT229 that Kintor is also doing. That's a pro tack. So this has gone on long enough, but thanks for watching. And if you made it this far into this video, comment in the comment section below. Blue puppies. That's as simple as it will be. Bye, guys.